Hello, my name is Modrum and today I'm going to show you my Fire Trickster build guide that utilizes Gel Course Blasting Knife to obliterate everything standing before you. Fast paced gameplay, amazing DPS and really cool visuals make this build a blast to play. However, this one requires quite a bit of gear and patience. You are locked into the marksman tree with no way to access later blade dancer passives, which makes you dependent on external means for power and defenses. If you still want to proceed, make sure to like, sub and comment for some much needed protection. Also, if you have any questions, ask them down below, I will try to answer them as fast as possible. I will give you an overview of the build, go over mechanics, passives, skills, the loot filter and itemization at the end. Now, this one will be a bit different than the last two, so make sure to let me know if you like it. The gimmick of this build is changing detonating arrow to a melee skill via the blasting dagger, creating a cone-shaped AoE behind enemy lines. This is possible because of barrage, extending the reach of this skill considerably, as well as removing the delay of arming the explosion. We will utilize Cinder Strike to build up flow, oil coating and fire shred stacks which greatly boost our damage output. Grinding packs of enemies consists of pressing Cinder Strike three times and finish up with detonating arrow. Touching enemies rips them apart which warrants the use of any means possible to get up close and personal to deliver the maximum amount of pain. Luckily we are blessed with multiple movement speed boosting passives and skills on this class to achieve high amounts of maneuverability which is our first and most important defense layer. Avoiding hits and looking for openings to strike is crucial on this class. Always being in motion provides us with another 25% less damage taken modifier through evasion, which is achieved through constantly holding left click in between attacks. The next layer are glancing blows, which lessen the impact of hits by 35%. Multiple passives, dust crotch stacks and apostasy make it possible to reach 100% to receive one. It is more than worth it to give up your dot chance in favor of this mitigation. It doesn't matter if you dodge 20 times if just one hit is enough to kill you. We are also utilizing Crimson Shroud stacks to receive 15% less damage taken over time. I will talk about further defenses and most importantly damage during the itemization section of this build. Next are passives. Get 20 points in Rogue, fill up the Blade Dancer tree next, followed up by the bottom part of the Marksman tree for crit vulnerability chance on hit as well as crit avoidance. Go back to the Rogue tree and fill out the rest before grabbing more life in the Marksman tree. Next the Loot Filter. You can find a custom one in the description box down below. Just download and import it. It takes care of your whole progression, but you can safely use a different one if you like. Skills are next. Since you guys usually skip around this one, I will omit explanations here. Take note of the number besides each node signifying what to grab first and last. Detonating arrow can have up to 30 points, so I distributed them accordingly. Cinder Strike has 24 distributed. Just pause the video for each skill tree and enjoy. You can find the planner down below. Now a quick look at my gear, so you know what my damage roughly translates to. You can find the optimized gear set with example idols in the talent planner down below. Since this one is heavily gear dependent, I will provide you with more in-depth explanations here. First, let's talk about the critical strike chance. You have a base chance of 5%, with additional 4% from each dagger, which is quite decent. We further utilize crit vulnerability, which gives us 20% additional chance to crit the target. This one is specific to the target you are hitting. This means we need to reach 80% to guarantee crits. This further means we need 789% additional critical strike chance for one dagger, or 516% for two. We get some from quick detonation on the skill itself and some from passives like critical precision as well as assets and quiver. Everything else needs to come from gear, idols and blessings. It's really easy to get the right amount on this class which frees up slots for increased damage crit multiplier and further scaling to your DPS. I would highly advise going for two daggers except for a scenario where you get the really good crystal sword which slightly outperforms a good rolled 0 LP version of the dagger. Now as far as sustain goes we need to utilize one source of life leech to not die. The easiest three are either the scalebane grimace helmet base, the stone tithe relic base or the melee health leech prefix on gloves. You can however utilize a bleeding heart if you have no other option. I personally would not recommend this since you are giving up quite a lot of damage on your amulet. Grab health, resistances and additional endurance around the 2.2k health mark. Now since I do get a few questions regarding empowered monoliths and how not to die, I will give you a few tips. Anything below 1.8k life will most likely get one shot. No matter the quality of mods on your base, if you only have 10 armor on it, it will not cut it. Change it up for a better base with hopefully more HP and armor. Armor is one if not the best defensive tool in the game. Your Shuri 
Hurricane Shield also provides you with a nearly permanent 150% increase, which is just insane. Utilize this. Next, cap your crit avoidance. Not getting crit is huge in preventing random one shots. Lastly, look out for Rippy mods on maps. Your damage and leech will suffer if you pick too many damage mitigating ones, but you will also die from too many damage boosting ones. I personally make sure that each build functions with whatever you pick, but this is only true for 100 to 150 corruption. Anything above that and you need to manage your mods. It's very important to do that the higher you go. Now a quick word on legendaries. I personally do not like them on this build except for the blasting dagger. We cannot really sacrifice an ethic slot because of the limited passive tree we have access to. But if you get lucky on a 2 LP bleeding heart with good damage mods, it can be worth it. Be aware that you can seal affixes on gear. Getting an additional tier 4 mod is almost always better than a 1 or 2 LP legendary. As far as blessings go, grab the fire damage one instead of the fire shred for the spirit of fire monolith. It is generally not worth it going for more shred because we already have quite a lot on cinder strike. Reign of dragons should always be found for crit avoidance, which will make you crit immune with just the heightened senses passive in the marksman tree. The black sun can be farmed for crit multi, crit chance or void resistance depending on your needs. Grab resistances on all others. And lastly idols. The rogue idols provide you with great defensive and offensive options. I highly recommend going with two huge idols with fire penetration when using daggers. All other affixes should be utilized based on your needs. You can roll elemental resistances, life, poison resistance, more crit multi and crit strike chance with daggers on your class ones. And the generic ones come with crit, life and resistances. Now this sums up my fiery trickster blasting knife build guide for last epoch. I will be soon back with another video. So make sure to sub, like and comment for more reviews, previews and guides. If you want to support me some more, make sure to check out my Patreon, Paypal and channel membership. See you next time and bye!